Number 43, determine the number of moles and the mass requested for each reaction in exercise 4.42. And then we have letter B in these exercises. So in this case, we need to find the number of moles and the mass of oxygen formed by the decomposition of 1.252 grams of mercury to oxide. Okie dokie. Now, when we are given mass values or any values you know, in general, and they're describing a chemical reaction, right? They gave us oxygen, right? They gave us a compound, mercury two oxide, and they told us that it was being decomposed or, you know, undergoing decomposition. We have to write a balanced equation. There's no way around it. So the first thing we're going to do before we even solve any math, we have to write a balanced equation. We've done tons of problems like this already. So if you guys are new here and you want more review on how to make a balanced equation, go check out on the playlist. Uh, the playlist is at the end of this video. You could click it. Um, and there's tons of problems. Okay. So I'm just going to assume that we know how to do a balanced equation. So let's just see if yours matches mine. So mercury two oxide is being decomposed. So that means that mercury two oxide should be a reactant and the individual elements or molecules should be on the product side. Now mercury two oxide is HG O, right? Because mercury had a plus two and oxygen has a negative two. So they crisscross and then they cancel. And this is being decomposed or breaking down into the two individual components. Well, one has got to be mercury and that's a free element, right? And then the other one is oxygen. But remember, oxygen doesn't live by itself. It's a diatomic. So it has to be O2. Now remember, once you make a equation, you have to make sure that it's balanced. So I'm just going to do a quick run through of that as well, right? Just to make sure that it's balanced. I have two oxygens here. I only have one here, so I need to put a two here. That gives me two mercuries, so I have to put a two here, and now we're all good. Okay, first piece of the puzzle done. Now what I like to do is I like to write underneath the compound that they gave us information for. They told us that we have 1.252 grams of mercury two oxide. That's this guy. So I have 1.252 grams of this, right? And they're looking for a completely different molecule. They're looking for the uh, moles and the mass of oxygen, which is all the way over here. So I need to find out the moles of this and I need to find out the grams because remember mass is in grams. So when you see this pattern of giving information of one compound and they're asking you for a totally different compound or molecule in the same balanced equation, this is stoichiometry. Now don't be scared. All right. We got this. This is just a bunch of ratios and most of the stuff you already learned. All right. Now there's a, there's a cool breakdown of how to do stoichiometry and that is right here. Let me just bring this down and maybe resize it a little bit. And maybe I can bring this up if I can. Perfect. So that I can resize this. Awesome. So now, basically, to go from one compound, I signify those as A's. To go to a new compound is B's. You go from grams to moles to moles to grams, grams to moles to moles to grams. All right. So you can only convert from one compound to another using a mole to mole ratio, which we will get to in a little bit. But basically what was our starting here? Oh, well, they told us that we had a start of 1.252 grams of HGO. And maybe, maybe I'll just write it down here, right? 1.252 grams of HDO. Well, I want to get two grams or even moles of the other guy, right? So that's these. I want to get to moles of O2. And then from there, it looks like I can convert into grams of O2. But what's the first thing that I need? Oh, I need to find out how many moles of mercury two oxide I have. Okay, 
But now the question is, how do I do that? We actually know how to do that one already, right? We've done tons of problems like that. I'm just going to set it up over here, 1.252 grams of HGO. And we're just doing dimensional analysis, ratios, right? Ratios are easy. Follow me here, right? All you do is you multiply by some ratio where you're going to have something on the top and something on the bottom. Always start with the units to guide your way. You don't want grams of the mercury 2 oxide, so that goes on the opposite side. So grams of HGO is on the bottom, and then the unit that you want is on top. Well, look next door. I want moles of HGO, so that goes on the top. Maybe I'll just write mole HGO. Okay, so the units are cool, but now the question is, what are the numbers here? If you're going from grams to moles of anything, right, it's got to be the same compound, right? All you're doing is using the periodic table. So the first step is always using the periodic table to get the mass. We've done that tons and tons of times, right? And remember, when you're using the periodic table, it's always one mole of the compound. So the one always goes with the unit mole. The mass goes with the grams. So now get your periodic tables out and let's just calculate what the mass is of HDO. I got one mercury, so 200.6, and I got one oxygen, so 16. So that's 216.6. And now the units gram of HGO will cancel on both sides. The numbers do not cancel, but the grams do. So first part, done. Now I have moles of the HGO, right? And we want to go to moles of O2, right? The other one. So I do the same thing. Don't worry about calculating right now. Keep flowing. Multiply by the next ratio and basically do the same setup as before. Right? You don't want mole of HGO, so that goes on the bottom. And you want mole of O2, right? Mole to mole. But the question is now, where do these numbers come from? Well, the first step was the periodic table. The second step is the balanced equation. So just remember these steps, guys, okay? So if going from moles of one compound to moles of another compound, in this case HGO to O2, you use the balanced equation. And all you're doing is you're just taking the coefficients, the big numbers in front of the compound. And you only have to look at the two, L, the two compounds that you have here. So for O2, I don't see a number here, right? So that secretly means that there is a one of them. I have one O2, so I'm going to put a one here. For HGO, because i got to find that one, ah, there is a coefficient here. It's a 2. So I'm just going to put that down here. And that cancels out with that. And you see how we're left with this moles of O2? So now we're here. The second step is cool. We finally have to go to grams of O2, right? But it's the same thing as before, just reversed. Right? The first part, we went from grams to moles. In the second part, we went from, or we're going from moles to grams. But now hold up. One of the answers is we want to find out the moles of O2. So we actually have a unit in which we can solve for, right? They wanted moles of O2. We got it. So I'm just going to figure this number out. Now just know that you can multiply the numerator, multiply all the denominators, and then do the division. But you could do this in one shot too. Every time that I see a denominator number in the calculator, I'll just press divide, denominator divide. And that way you can do it without using parentheses. So I'm going to say 1.252 divided by 216.6. And then I'm just going to press divided by 2. And I get a pretty small number, 0. Point, and I need four sig figs, right? So maybe I will do this in scientific notation, 2.8. 890 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, negative 3. And that's how many moles of O2 there are. Okay, first answer done. Now, just like we said before, we just got to convert the moles into the grams. 
So I'm just going to write that number out. 2.890 times 10 to the negative 3 grams of O2. Oh, sorry, not grams. Christina. Mole of O2. And we do the same dimensional analysis. So times by a ratio. The unit that we don't want is mole of O2. So that goes on the opposite side. And the unit that we want, grams, goes on the top. Oop, grams, I'll just put G, of O2. Well, this is periodic table, just like it was before with the grams to mole conversion. And remember, what did we say? Whenever we see the mole and we're using the periodic table, you always have one mole of that compound or molecule. In this case, the molecule is O2, so you have two oxygens. So you have to take 16, because that's the mass of 1, and times it by 2, so that's 32. Cancel these out, and you are good to go. All we got to do is 2.890 times 10 to the negative third times 32. Keeping it with uh, four sig figs, I get 0 0.09248. And that's grams of O2. And you are done. Guys, what do you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Give the video a thumbs up if it did help. And subscribe to the channel. That will help us out. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. I hope to see you in future videos. All right? Love talking to you guys. And you guys are, have been awesome throughout this whole experience. So let's, let's keep learning. All right? See you later. Bye-bye.